Hey everyone, so this video is a little different than my other ones. I wanted to share my experience with acne. So I've had a lot of my friends and stuff like that ask me how my skin has cleared out a lot since, you know, high school days and stuff. And I know it's something that a lot of people suffer with and it truly is like really, really crummy to have to deal with that. So I want to share with you a couple of my tips and hopefully that can help you guys out. The first one is water. Before I used to only drink water whenever I would eat, which I don't even do anymore because that's even worse for you. Uh, it dilutes the stomach acid and which you need to digest your food and break down everything. So you should be completely avoiding any kind of drinks with your food half an hour before and after you eat. Um, I never used to drink water to the point where I was so used to being thirsty I didn't even realize I was thirsty all the time. The best type of water is spring water. If you can go find a spring, a local one, and fill uh, a glass, you know, a huge thingy and take that home you can. Or there's the reverse osmosis systems you can install on your top. Anyways, water is the best thing you could do. Avoid plastic. The next thing is my probiotics. I like to use this one. I started using them in about 2014 and I haven't looked back. I take one a day ever since then and it's made a huge difference. I've tried different brands and ones that supposedly have better strains or more strains or better quality and I always go back to this one. It's great for when you're sick. When we have a cold, we up to up to four times a day with a bunch of vitamin C. It's good after you have to take antibiotics because it's got probiotics to help out with rebuilding your gut. It's great for if you have bowels, you know, issues or stomach pains or, or anything really. I love probiotics. I recommend it to everyone. I uh, went on a trip one time and everyone got like sick to their stomach, you know, vomiting, diarrhea, all that kind of stuff. And I was the only one that didn't. So I offered a bunch of these to people and they got better almost right away. So I never travel without it and literally I take it every single day, even while pregnant, breastfeeding, all that kind of stuff. It's great. <sighs> the next one was the hardest, which is eliminating dairy. That includes ice cream and yogurts and cheese and, you know, cream and milkshake and butter and the list goes on and on. Uh, you know, it's great because you can find alternatives, but it's really tough. It, this, I feel like, has been one of the biggest impacts. I used to drink milk so much and have ice cream so much and all that kind of stuff. All those hormones that are in milk really mess with our system and, and the process that our milk legally has to go through in order for us to be able to buy and consume it, it just messes up the whole science behind dairy and what originally made it good for us so if i could get milk raw fresh from a happy cow uh, that's eating you know pastured organic grass-fed and it's just happy and straight from the cow maybe boil it a little bit i would but it's illegal here so i avoid dairy completely and my skin has cleared out a lot because of it the next thing that i stopped eating is spicy or deep fried food i thought of this video, I came up with this idea because just the other day I had deep fried cauliflower wings. Um, it's delicious, but it's so oily and I haven't had deep fried oily stuff in so long and I instantly got a pimple. So it reminded me why I stopped taking, you know, eating these foods in the first place. So spicy and deep fried, which is, you know, 90% of Indian food and I'm half Indian. No one believes me that I can feel the pimple growing instantly. If I go to a mosque event or visit someone's house and they offer me something deep fried, I can't refuse. So I take a bite and I will instantly, to prove a point, if I'm with my husband or a friend, I'll be like, right here, I'm gonna get a pimple right here, I feel it. And they're like, oh yeah, as soon as I take a bite. And the next day I'm like, where did I tell you I had a pimple last night? And they're like, you said right here. And I'm like, look, and it's right there. So. Honestly, I feel it instantly. So I do not eat deep fried food. If I find a recipe online that I wanna duplicate, I bake it instead if it says to deep fry. Another one that was hard for me is skincare products and makeup. So I would always use, if there was like a line of something and it was like acne prone or sensitive, I would always use like the acne prone one. And if there was like 2% of a really, I forget what the chemical was, like hydrochloric acid, I think, no. 
if, anyways, if it said like 2% of some type of chemical versus like 5 or 7%, I would get like the highest one available because I'm like, my skin is so, you know, it's not sensitive. It's just so much acne. It needs the strongest thing ever to fix it. So I would always do that and I would use all these harsh chemicals and then I would moisturize and then I would put, you know, foundation to cover it all up during the day and then at night I would use makeup remover and then cleanse it again with these harsh chemicals and moisturize again. So believe it or not, now I don't use any foundation. And I used to never be able to leave the house ever without foundation at the very least. I couldn't be seen without my skin covered because it was just blemishes and pimples everywhere. And I totally understand when people do that because it's, it's hard to go out there when your skin is just flashing all these different colors. But I went on a trip uh, for well, six weeks and four weeks of that I was in Iran and we weren't allowed to wear any kind of makeup. And it was a really hard adjustment for me. And eventually it really, really helped my skin. It calmed it down. I realized I wasn't irritating it so much and I wasn't causing any inflammation. And it just let it breathe and cleanse. My, my skin felt different. It wasn't so oily all the time because I wasn't overwashing it and stuff. So yeah, now the only thing that I do is I really, I just do wudu throughout the day. That's my cleanse. And then I use the coconut oil that I use in my kitchen. Um, once in a while, if I'm feeling fancy or I really just want to do a deep cleaning, I use this, I still am using the Eminence Organic products, which is just a face wash and moisturizer here and there. But um, I typically just stick to that. And if I'm wearing, you know, light mascara or something, I'll just, I have this, um, makeup remover that's foam that I simply just use on my eyes which I'm trying to wean off of as well yeah I'm now down to natural like household products like not even avoiding harsh chemicals just trying to avoid chemicals period so it's been it's been really helpful my skin's really happy about it I can tell and the second last one is sleep so I know this is hard um it's not something that everyone has control over if you're working multiple jobs or if you have young children that don't sleep through the night um, I would try to get at least six hours a day. I could tell when I have a really, really bad sleep because of my kids and I'm, or I'm sick or something, I wake up and I could, you know, my skin just feels really irritated. And lastly, I think this was more of an issue before I, I was able to wear the hijab, but I see guys as well as girls um, who suffer from the same thing. It's your hair or any objects in your face. So, you know, if you have bangs or if you leave your hair down and it's always kind of like touching right over here, um, or your forehead, or if you use your phone a lot, um, it causes, or if you wear a cap, like guys wear hats and stuff like that. And even us with the hijab, you have to make sure your underpiece is always clean. And I try to keep it as far away as possible. I do have some that come out over here because it sometimes goes down, but I try my best to keep my face clear of anything because it just rubs up against it and causes irritation. Trying to keep your face clear of anything. So again, I avoid sunglasses even. Um, just because I don't like it touching my nose and going in next to my ear over here. I avoid using my phone as much as I can, like over here. I try to use speakerphone or my headset or FaceTime. And yeah, so that is my last tip. If you guys do all of that and you maintain it for like a month, give it a shot. And if it works out for you, do let me know and tell everyone you can because Sometimes it's so simple and instead of filling your drawers and your, your bathroom medicine cabinets, your makeup bags and all your cosmetics and everything full of all these things that are supposed to help you with acne, but you're not even drinking a glass of water a day. You're not even getting enough sleep or you're lathering your skin and washing it and drying it out and, and over irritating it. And you're filling your system with dairy and hormones and, and, and all these things that cause inflammation. Then these, products that you're getting to help you are doing nothing for you. So try these things first. It's going to save you in the long run. It's going to make you feel better from the inside because you're avoiding all these things that are bad for you and doing all these things that your body needs. And you're going to, it's going to show from the outside. You'll feel so much better and it's going to save you so much money on all the stuff that you're buying to trick you into thinking they're helping you with your acne. I hope you guys give this a shot. I know it's very different than the typical videos I make, but I am trying to branch off and just share what I know in general, as opposed to just Islamic things, um, because I just want to help and share what I can with whatever topic I can. So give this a shot and let me know. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. And assalamu alaikum and take care.